Well, hey, welcome to the Beyond the Lines podcast. Uh, Everybody has got different perspectives and sometimes we draw lines in the sand and we say, hey, we are not gonna love beyond that line. And so on this podcast, we wanna talk about those lines and we wanna learn how to listen and uh, hear different perspectives. And so I'm Clayton Edelman, I'm one of the hosts on this podcast and I've got with me Jonathan Miller, who is one of our other hosts. Hey, everybody. Yeah, and then our newest host, uh, you might recognize him from three episodes ago. We interviewed DJ, and uh, DJ, I'm just so glad you're here, man. Hey, hey, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Join the team. Good. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, man. We just had a great time with you, and we had a great time with DJ uh, that we're like, man, wouldn't it be great if he'd just be, <laughs> just be on our podcast? So he said... I'll yeah. think about it, and then he's like, I don't know if I like these guys. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, everything's a trial run, all right? So we, yeah. we, we can break up. This is yeah. a great period <laughs> for us. He, he didn't say any we're, of we're that. We're dating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're dating. But no, he didn't actually say any of that. Uh, he, he was very enthusiastic about it, so I'm glad to have you on the podcast. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to be a part of the team. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So for today's podcast, um, so yours came out. And then we've got uh, some episodes that have come out since where Jonathan uh, interviewed Jamie and Donna Winship. Yeah, so good. Really good, good episodes. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. So we just want to talk about it today and kind of uh, take away some of the key points that we uh, listened and took to heart during that episode and reflect on it in kind of just, just a discussion format. And hopefully you can learn something new or be reminded of something as well. So yeah. who wants to, uh, wants to kick us off? I what, mean, what stood out? I, I got to start by just saying, like, it was such an incredible opportunity that even this podcast has given me just already. It's a brand new podcast. This is brand new for us. But um, to sit across the table from incredible people like the Winships. Yeah. Like, seriously, uh, by the way, you can't really listen to this podcast without going and listening to those ones. So if you're listening to this right now and you're like, oh, I just want to listen to Clayton, DJ, and John because they're really cool people. Uh, <laughs> which is okay. <laughs> which is okay. You can do that. Uh, but I still recommend you go and listen to their podcasts first. They have two yeah. podcasts with us. They're just released before this. And they're so good. Like, and uh, honestly, I'm, I'm being totally honest. Like, it was like a life changing like i mean not like uh you know changing my hair color or anything like that, but like life changing <laughs> experience sitting across the table from them and just hearing their experience and how they view god and and all that so like wow what a tremendous opportunity to just be a part of that and uh wow i that's i, I just want to start off by saying that yeah, yeah no there's tons to take away from it and i was just even jealous just like listening to it. i was like dude you got to spend time with them and have these conversations And some of the stories that Jamie told, I was just like, that just sounds like a Bible story. Like almost like it's like Paul or something and he's gone through something. Um, But it was so cool. Yeah, completely, completely amazing. And just how they're able to um, uh, bring you into their story and also pull out some incredible principles and show who Jesus Mm -hmm. is in in the midst of that. And so, I mean, I've listened to Jamie you know, a, f- a few times before and I never walk away without being like, man, I got to do better. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's some things that I need, I, I need, I need to do better, but that's just their, their ministry in their heart. And I yeah. think it's incredible. That's one of the main things they talked about on the podcast was identity. Like what, what did you guys get from like what they talked about, about identity and how that affects how we just live our lives? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, that's just a, a, a huge thing. I think we, spend most of our lives i mean we're all still pretty pretty young and we spend a a lot of our time operating in a false identity and so we are looking at the world we're looking at other people we're interacting with other people and not understanding who god has called us to be and um uh, donna um has talked about uh you know who who she is. And they both talked about who is God calling them. They talk about this God giving uh, people in the Bible, different names and calling them who he Mm. wants them to call. And like, man, there's, there's a lot of times in my life where I feel like I don't understand completely who my identity is and is important for me to understand. I think we all do that because when we are in our identity, like they were pointing out, we're able to, um, interact with the world in such a way that God can use us in, in, in like in an amazing way. Talking about living in your identity versus not living in your identity and how that gives you life or takes life like away from you. Mm-hmm, so yeah. I wrote here was I was listening, um, you know, she said, you know, when you live into your identity, God has given you, it is life giving and it's like you're living in the kingdom of God. Yeah. And I think 
it's easier for us maybe to think about that more so in the sense of like pastoral ministry and church ministry um, yeah. to think what I'm doing right now is the kingdom of God. Mm. Um, but then I think about it even from their perspective of, you know, Jamie was a, a police officer, which I had no clue that was part of his background. Yeah. And that yeah. was cool to hear. Um, and then to hear Donna's, you know, she's got a focus in education and teaching, it sounds like, and how they're living out their jobs or their roles um, and it was giving them kind of some of their purpose, but then how God kind of rewired it and said, Hey, no, this is what I really want you to do. And you can kind of still do some of the things you're already doing, but on a greater scale for my kingdom. I thought that yeah. was, that was really cool to hear. Yeah. I mean, we just think about like, you know, a lot of times we get into a career or into a job and um, we get our identity from what the job is giving our identity in right yeah and they're like hey listen god is has given you an identity and in your career and in your job you're going to live that out it's a different paradigm shift that i think um can be really hard to grasp because uh, you know the job the career is pretty tangible mm -hmm. you know and um god is like telling us no listen like there's things that i have for you that is true to who you are and like you were saying like the whole like life giving and that it's going to um, inform who, what you're going to do, like who you are is going to inform what, what you're going to do. And I just to hear them and see them uh, kind of live that out in a, in just an amazing way is I think, man, yeah. I, I think it's, it's challenging for me. In our culture, that's one of the first things though we ask people is like about our identity is like, Oh, what do you do? You know, right. totally. what, what's your yeah. job? What, how does that affect who you are? And that's how we associate people. Oh, you're a pastor. That's your identity. But is my identity a pastor or is it um, something more that God has given me? You know, yeah. is it, is my identity a computer programmer or is my true identity like a creator or um, mm. being like my creator and creating new things and yeah. in my, that my aspect and in my field, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's so good. It's kind of exciting as a follower of Christ, no matter who you are, uh, you work in church ministry, you work in sales, you work in education, in the medical field, doesn't matter. Like if you trust God with, with what he's got and what he's going to do th for you and through you, uh, I think that's exciting because you're a part of building his kingdom and doing that. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the coolest parts, I think, of what they, when they said they moved overseas, it was like they said, when we moved overseas, we didn't change who we are. Like right. we were just going to do what God had already made us in our true identity to be. And that was like mind blowing to me. I was like, wow. Because normally I would say that is a big identity shift, but they said they're just living into what they already were. Like that's what God does with us when we allow him to be the fulcrum of our identity. Yeah. And like you were like asking them the question, like, man, like you gave up. Like you gave up all this stuff. Like, no, like we really didn't give up much because this is something, this is the road that we were already on. And I think what is easy for us to do um, when we hear stories like that of people going overseas and doing all these crazy things, like, well, I, I, I can never do that. And the answer is that may be true because maybe that's not what God designed you to do. Wow, that's maybe, good. May, maybe it's something right in your local community. Maybe it's stepping out and, and loving people that, that you don't know. You know, you talk about this whole idea of loving beyond the line. That, mm. That's what they did. And sometimes we can look at somebody else's story and say, well, man, that's that's so cool. Like, that's that's amazing. And sometimes we can forget that God is calling you to something very specific to who you are and yeah. whatever that is, God is preparing you for, for, for that. Like, yeah. you know, they, they crossed the line of, you know, leaving uh, their, their homeland to go love on another nation and, and that people group, but they've already been on that. Like, so that makes me think, okay, what has God uniquely is preparing me for in this season to then go forth and and to do and to do his will. Yeah. And it doesn't lead everyone overseas. Sometimes it just leads us right to the person next to us. Yeah. And being open to that and living out our true identity inside of that. Going back to the the topic of identity and you you had said you know they didn't change who they were like they were already headed on that path. But I thought it was really uh humbling that they were that Jamie, you know, in particular telling one of his stories he was ready to admit like his wrongdoings in, yeah. in his identity. So going back to that story about, you know, how he was facing 10 years in prison potentially. Mm -hmm. And he talks about like, Hey, how I was talking about Islam was not 
respectful. It was breaking the law there. Mm. And he talks about this confession too of like, hey, we're, we're confessing and just telling the truth of what I've done wrong. Um, and so kind of going with that, uh, I think too that Jamie and Donna just pointed out like, hey, it's okay to to say where you maybe have, have had some wrongdoings in, um, in your identity or, or how you did something. Because sometimes we can identify like, hey, I, I do this and because I did this, it's attached to my identity now. Um, yeah. But I think what really showed was their identity to, to Christ's model of, Hey, let me, let me admit where I messed up, uh, and be forgiven and move on. Um, but what did you guys think about that story? Just the one about them getting, or Jamie potentially being arrested. My favorite part of that story was that he wasn't going to finish the story when I, when we were talking about it, I was like, yeah, I'm done. And I'm like, what, what happened, <laughs> dude? <laughs> like what actually happened? And, uh, that was incredible. But <laughs> another thing is like just the. I think the humbling place that he was put in to realize that he was wrong. And he, I think he even said something like, it's terrifying for an American Christian to admit that they are wrong Mm -hmm. because we want to know all the things. We want to not just know all the things, but we wanted to say that we already know them. Like it's already set in stone. And I, I, something I learned from them is like, God is not set in stone. You know, he's revealed himself to us, especially in the scriptures and through other people. But that's not everything, you know, right. and as long as everything's in line with what he's revealed to us already, you know, there's so much more to learn about him, you know, and uh, that really stuck out to me. It's like God isn't set in stone, um, but we like to try to make him set in stone and that God said to him, you were wrong the way you did this was wrong Mm -hmm. and uh, that was a very humbling experience for him and um even a humbling thing for me is just realizing oh wow like i even went i you know just like a week later i was praying and there's somebody in my life at the time where i very much disagreed with what they believed and and i was i i was talking to god i was like what if i'm actually wrong god and wrong about you maybe they're right wrong about um you know stuff. And I had this overwhelming sense. It wasn't like audible words or anything, but overwhelming sense of God being like, yeah, you are wrong, (laughs) but I love you anyways. And that's a freeing thought. It really is. Yeah. I mean, I, man, I, I I agree. I think, especially in our culture, um, in this Western world that, that we live in, like we, we don't like to admit that, that we're wrong. It, It it's, I guess it's a, it's us showing weakness maybe, Maybe that's, that's, that's where that, where that comes from. And, um, being able for, for Jamie to be in that spot to say, uh, you know, I, I am wrong. And the, the crazy thing is, was what he was doing was trying to be point people to Jesus. That's the crazy part about it. And so how easy is that for us to do in our culture today? It's just to make um, enemies out of people or to put a line in front of people or to treat people in such a way because I'm doing it for God. Mm. And God's like, no, the way that you were doing that, thank you for trying to point people to me, but <laughs> the way that you were doing that was was unacceptable. And I think it's so easy for us as Christians to justify our behavior and treating people um and treating not treating people well because we're doing it for for God. And it's just like, man, that that's that's not that's that's not right. That's not yeah. when we look at Jesus and they and he and they mentioned the story of how he, uh, Jesus and the woman at the uh, well, the Samaritan woman, and how he uh, called her identity out and loved her where she was, and they didn't really condemn her. He didn't really do it in a in a bad way. He 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 was calling who calling out who she was in a loving way, showing her that he is the way, and I'm um, loving her through all of her pain and all of the the stuff that she's been through because of the men of the time, like, man, like we, like he took care of her in that moment. And it's easy for us to have our theology or yeah, however we want to practice in a pragmatic way, you know, what, what we feel like we're being taught in scripture, but we could run people over with that. And that's like that, that is in it, in and of itself, creating a line. Even yeah. either creating a line for myself or for someone else to create a line against me. And we're supposed to be people of peace and people are going to tell the truth and love people where they are. And that's just a really eye-opening story of how Jamie was kind of taught that. Like there's there's a way to do it. 
there, there's a way to, to go about it. And so the story was obviously crazy. <laughs> you know, the guy coming in uh, at the at the end <laughs> there and kind of shutting the whole thing down. I mean, yeah. that's that's that, that's that's just all crazy. But I think the heart of the story is there's there, there's an approach to um, how we are supposed to, to to love on people and do do the work of God. And yeah, and all that kind of stems back from the identity that 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 God um, has given us. Yeah. yeah. That was my favorite part of the story was because I listened to this one while driving and I'm just painting this picture in my head of like yeah. a courtroom. Yeah. And, and then here comes this guy walking in and talks to the, the judges or whatnot. But what I loved was the ripples of love that the wind ships referred back to of how two random guys who to what we believe and what we know were Christian guys and they just loved on uh, that that Muslim guy and his wife as they were here at ASU, like that was insane to me of just two Christians that are completely unrelated to to the Winships, how that played into um, Jamie being being set free. Yeah. And it's made me think about the the daily relationships and just interactions we have with people. Just an idea of like, hey, this is every interaction with someone else, that's like holy ground. Cause you mm. don't know what God's going to do with yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and like, yes, we, we know, and we've heard that, you know, everyone is created in the image of God, but it's super easy to forget. Yeah, uh, but 100%. when I, when yeah. I just think back to those ripples, I'm like, man, like how I treat somebody in a, in a supermarket line or something like no clue how that could affect somebody. We don't think it might have an effect for the kingdom, but that ripple could eventually come in one way or another. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know, I just imagine a scene in, in heaven one day where we, we get to see where those ripples played out yeah. and what happened from it. And something he said where he was like, there is no person out there where it's a waste of time to spend time with them and to talk with them and show them that they're loved. There's the, a person like that doesn't exist in the world because they're all made in God's image. And that was that's kind of a interesting thought because I think there's a lot of people even in our minds that we would be like, Oh no, they're not worth the time of day. Like it's just, it's, it's easy to fall into that camp. You know, I just think of driving. That's, this is the easiest thing. <laughs> this is the easiest thing for me to think of. Like the easiest place to dehumanize people is to be like, Oh, that car is such a jerk. You know, you're like, safe in your car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. right. And then, you know, I, I have my own, I'm not going to talk, say what my own driving, you know, the way at my own driving theology is what's coming to my mind. That's <laughs> <laughs> driving philosophy. But yeah, my philosophy of driving. I'm not going to go into that. But sometimes I'm in the car with somebody I really respect, and they're driving, and uh, they're great people, and they're wonderful people, but they're driving in a different, totally different philosophy than my driving. And I realize, oh, man, like just because somebody's driving some a different way, which I totally disagree with, doesn't mean they're a terrible person. But we – it's it, – have you ever experienced that it's easy to dehumanize somebody in another car because you're like, oh, no, they're doing it wrong, you know, like, and they're such a jerk or I'm going to flip them off. But if you're sitting in that mm -hmm. car with them right then, would you be making the same comment if you knew them as a person? I, I don't know. I don't think so. But I think <laughs> your parallel is really good when it comes to um, not only dehumanizing people uh, who are different than us, like, you know, the Muslims. And he talked about doing that. Um, when he was in Baghdad, which I'm pretty sure we'll get to in a minute. Um, but it's also easy for us to do that within the church. And, and, I, and I don't mean just, I mean, in the church locally and, and globally, um, we have people that disagree maybe on some non-essential um, philosophy on some the theological things, you know, and it's so easy for us as Christians to want to start fighting with, with one another about these, about these things. And like you're saying, dehumanizing people and how they practice their faith and um, really separating the church. And that's one of the things that Jamie also talks about as well is this idea of sin, sin equaling separation. And so uh, what do you guys think about like this idea of sin being more about separation than moral behavior. Cause in my mind, I've kind of grown up in the space where, Oh, when you sin, it's because you did something morally wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But really the definition of sin is when we are separating ourselves from God and we're separating ourselves from his creation. So what do you guys think about that? I've never actually, I remember him saying that I was there, mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> <laughs> physically <laughs> there. I've never made the connection to what you just said. 
of it being the difference between being separate and and sin being a moral failure. Like, yeah, I've been raised. It every sin is a moral failure, no exception. But is sin actually just a separate? Obviously, it separates us from God. I've heard that forever, you know. Mm-hmm. But it also separates me from other people. Mm-hmm. But is the but I've always been more focused on the moral part of it. I've never been focused on the separate part of what sin separation, you know, the tearing apart that sin can cause in both communities and my relationship with God. That's definitely not the focus uh, of the way I've thought in the past or, or now even. That idea makes sense when I boil it down to relationships and how we treat other people. Right. Like if you love right. me, you'll love my people. Mm-hmm. And if you are distancing yourself from those who God has put around you to love, and so in Jamie's case, um, he was talking about the local uh, I- Iraqis that were there and how he started to uh, react to them because he was afraid. And then his team of Christians there started to react to them as well because they were following him. Um, I-, I think it just makes sense. Like, yeah, like God has called us to love those people. Um, and you look back even to on the ASU students, like God called them to, to love the, the Muslim student that was in their PhD program regardless. And so when you do start to think, Hey, am I, am I separating myself from the mission that you've called me to do of, of loving others and loving yeah. my neighbors? Um, I think it's super, it makes crystal clear sense. And I'm like you, I've been in that camp where it's like, yeah, sin is a moral failure, you know, yes. um, which I, I think it can be because it's a yes. disservice to yeah. someone mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and but I just, I haven't thought about sin in the other way of it's distancing yeah. yourself. Yeah. Like and, it, and, and it's, it's deeper. It's like you, mm-hmm. you're, you're separating from the things that God has cr- created. And so, um, the people that God has created, this earth that he has created, like you're, it's so easy to separate ourselves from that. And he taught, he, Jamie kind of talks about it in the, in the podcast. It's like, Oh, we, we're, we're not okay with the, with the moral stuff. We, we get that. But when it comes to us separating um, ourselves from him and separating ourselves from each other, we kind of let that slide because we justified in our fear. Mm-hmm. He didn't say that part. I kind of, add, I'm adding that part. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, Mr. Winship. I'm, add, I'm adding, I'm adding two. two I, I two think you would agree. If, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's because of our fear is when we are um, able to separate ourselves because we are justifying the, the actions. And God is like, no, like I did that for you first. I loved you first. And so therefore you're supposed to do other people and all Christians. We all, we, we will all agree with this. We want people to know who Jesus is. Jesus tells us, if you want people to know who I am, you need to love each other. Well, you need to love, love people. Well, and that is, and, and when you look at the Muslim guy who saved Jamie's part of that life, yeah, you know, yeah. 10 years, got him out. He didn't talk about what he learned in the Bible study. He talked about how they loved him yeah. Yeah. when he was in crisis, when he was sitting with his wife, trying to figure out, okay, what, like, what are we going to do? These two guys loved him where he was. They invited him to the Bible study. That was great. We should do those things. We should invite people to Bible study. So hear me say that we should invite people to church on Sunday. We should do that. But it has to be in the context of loving them because that's what's going to, that, that's what, that's what they're, they're not going to remember. And who knows what that's going to do to that guy in, in his future. Right. Obviously he's still uh, a Muslim man and really proud of that, but um, he was able to recognize, even though they disagree with us, that the Muslim religion and Christian religion, or we're told that that we're opposed, like he said, we're enemies, and there's things that they believe differently. He understood super clear what it was like to be loved. Mm. And that's what people understand. And that's what I think is so incredible about you know their story and what Jamie's platform is trying to teach people you know, even with their true identity is like this, this idea of, of loving people is so deep and it's so, especially with our political climate and all the other stuff that we have going on in, in Western culture, it is so easy to put up these lines that, that we need to break down. And it's all fortified of fear, fortified of people living out of their false identity, Mm -hmm. fortified with, with you name it, you know, with, with whatever. And, and that's what the enemy wants. 
He wants us to be divided. He wants us to do that. He wants us to not understand that this whole Christian walk is, isn't about behavior management. It's about love and action. And when we're doing that, we're able to connect to God and connect to his people and all that. So that's just an incredible part of, of the story that I, that I liked and something that I, that I wrestled with that I am wrestling with right now. Yeah. And that fear element just keeps coming up and up like over and over again, because like, uh, it was his fear that was driving him apart from his team members who were um, from Baghdad, right? Uh, Because he was afraid of people like them would be the ones that would end up killing his kids someday, which I don't believe his kids ever were harmed anyways. They had team members. I talked with them afterwards, after the podcast, but they talked about how their team members, there's people that their cars were shot up completely. Like uh, one team member lost to everybody in their family. (sighs) And so it, it was not a safe place. Oh. And, but I think one thing that really stuck out to me was when Jamie said, we believe the worst thing that can happen to us is to die. And we don't think that maybe this, like when we're, you know, that actually is a good thing. We don't believe that God has something on the other side of us. We don't actually believe that because the worst thing that could happen to us is for us to lose our freedoms, us to lose our lives, to lose our money. Those are the worst things we have that can happen to us in our Western culture and mm. our Western Christianity is, but God says there's so much more. So why do we fear that? Why do we fear losing our lives? Why do we fear losing even our, our family's lives when we actually follow God and the Bible so clear, like, don't be afraid of those things. Don't be afraid of losing those things. Love, despite all of that, like that was mind blowing to me. And I even confessed that to them. I was like, my greatest fear is that I would die yeah. and leave my kids without a father. Yeah. That's and, relatable. Yeah. And, and he said, do you, I mean, do you believe that God wouldn't provide for your kids if you were gone? And I was like, I guess I do. And that's why I'm afraid <laughs> of it. Like it's real. And so even just confessing that has helped me think through that process. I wouldn't say I'm totally, <laughs> totally healed of that fear, but like um, it's definitely helped work wonders. And, and, but it's like total, like everybody in our country, our culture almost is afraid to die or leave somebody behind or um, that or lose some, their way of life. Yeah. Or lose yeah. their way of life. And that's not the life that God calls us to. God calls us to, just trust him in every circumstance and that he will be able to provide that, I, that I can trust him to provide for my family. Even if for some reason I was to die, you know, if I really believe in God, that's what he calls me to do is trust him in the midst of that. And we, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's hard. I think most of us kind of fall into this camp where God, I know you can do it, yeah, but I don't think you're going to, mm. I mean, I think that's something that I, I mean, I, I've journaled a lot, you know, in my personal time about that idea. Yeah. That I, I know you can, but will you do it? Like, and, and I think a lot of us, if I'm being honest about myself, when I'm faced with these circumstances in my life, sometimes I do think like, no, like he just won't. He just won't. I, I don't know why he won't. He just won't. And I think uh, part of that is being okay that he won't because I think my my when I say like well he just won't he just won't is well dang it like that's messed up that he won't yeah and I think the challenge is to say well he didn't because he wasn't supposed to and I am completely as okay with him doing it and not doing it that that is that is so easy to say and so hard to to do like to think about that's where I need to be. Like, you know, even if, you know, yeah. e- even, yeah. even if God let us burn in this furnace. Yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's what I was thinking this. Like, right? as soon as you started talking about this, I was like, that's exactly the verse. Like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, King, we're not going to worship you because our God is able to save us from the burning fire. But even if he doesn't, we won't do it. He right. doesn't have to. We just know he can. And they had such faith that they were willing to risk their entire right. lives. <laughs> and and if you notice the response, because if you look at my response was, "Hey God, I I don't I I don't know if I know that you can, I but I don't know if you will." And the "don't know if you will" part is based out of fear, 
Yeah. And their even if part is based out of the confidence they have in God and it's not based in fear. And so like, I think for me, I'm just really thinking out loud right now. It's just like, man, like how, how different is that? Like, God, I know that you can, and I know, I know that you can, and you could do it. But even if God, I'm, I'm confident in who you are and, yeah. and where, and where I'm going to be on the, on the other side of that, whether that be, um, you know, the extreme is death. Um, but I think for a lot of us, when it comes to Americans, it's like you said, our rights, it's our, it's our way of life and being afraid that uh, Christianity is taken out of, of schools and books and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, God's like, I created all this. So like, don't, don't worry about it. Like trust in me mm-hmm. and, and, uh, uh, be a part of me. And even if whatever your fears happens, I'm with you. Yeah. Well, and that goes back to like, Jamie asked the question, like what casts out that fear? And he just responded. It's that perfect love yeah. mm-hmm. that, that God yeah. has for you. And that's, that's the challenge, right? Is leaning into that love and saying, all right, yeah, you know, things aren't, aren't going how I want them to go or they're not panning out. And, you know, even if like, I'm just going to trust that, that you've got this under control, God. And, uh, that's not easy. Like that's a confession. Like, yeah, I, I'm yeah. just saying that like as a pastor, like it's not always easy to, to lean into that. Um, it, it's definitely easy to get sideswiped and think about, Oh, here's everything that's going wrong. Um, but yeah, man, I was just encouraged by, by that and what he said. Um, but I don't know about you guys. Yeah. What you thought about that? Well, I want to ask you, John, um, you know, it's been a little bit since you had to process, you know, kind of the, the truth telling that they were able to give you and like, hey, like what, like, do you truly believe in God? What are some of the ways that you felt like since then that kind of helped? Pra- maybe some practical yeah. wisdom. Yeah, <laughs> I think the biggest thing, and like I said, it was kind of a, a milestone in my life talking to them. Not necessarily that that conversation changed me completely by any means. I don't think it. It just made me start to think and to rethink some of the ways that I had been doing things and how I'd been interacting with God. And so I started spending, I mean, it sounds really cliche. I started spending some more time with God um, and just sitting and asking the kind of the two questions that that Jamie said, and that's, what do you want me to know? Mm -hmm. And then what do you want me to do? do? Instead of saying like, God, why don't you fix this situation? And why don't you give me this? And uh, I mean, the list of things that is, again, very cliche, but we do it. We do it every time when we pray, but it's still instead asking, you know, what do you want me to know about me? What's what what do I need to confess to you? What do I actually believe? And then actually Mm. confessing those to God actually really helped me a ton in confessing like, God, I don't actually believe you have this handled. I'm realizing that I don't actually believe that and confessing that to him, repenting and being like, God, Show me a better way, you know, and trying to imagine him taking that and giving that over to him. And what I found even just giving those things over to God is it would be great for like a day. And I'd be like, oh man, I feel like this weight is lifted off my shoulders and then it come back and then I had to give it over again. So what I found after that is um, just this, there's a continued process of healing that God wants us to go through and finding our identities confessing the things that we believe about him that aren't true and, and asking him, I mean, you might be, you know, listening right now and be like, I don't have any, you know, wrong beliefs about God. I would challenge you that you do. I think we all do. Um, honestly, every human does because we're human and, <laughs> yeah. and we're kind of messed up. So I would challenge you to ask God what, and be honest and then spend actual time listening for something, an impression, a um, uh, you know, images that come to mind, ask him, where do I act? Where don't I trust you? Help me to see that. Where don't I trust you in my life and help me to confess it. And when you see it, it's going to be hard because <laughs> you're gonna be like, Oh, you know, I, I, you know, like I don't want to give that away. You know, it's, it. I like that burden, you know, it's more comforting than trusting you. And then you realize, oh, I actually don't trust God. Like, and then it's kind of the cycle and you're like, okay, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it to you, God. I'm going to repent. I'm going to give it. I'm going to confess it. You know, I don't trust you, God, to take care of my kids if I die. Oh, you know, it starts to feel a little better as you actually make that confession. Um, and then to do it over and over again as it comes up again. And, and it's a continued process. I think 
so often as Christians, we can be really set on those like miraculous moments in scripture where it's like, God's parting the Red Seas for, you know, <laughs> Moses. Why can't he do it for me in an instantaneous fix of the problem? Why can't he make an instantaneous fix for me? He can. It's that thing. Mm. But doesn't it, that those those parts of scripture where there's these massive miracles are an exception to the rule. That's why they're written in scripture. If they they were normal, everything, they, they wouldn't be written <laughs> there if they're normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so... That's what God, I mean, God doesn't always work that way and he can, he can do that. But I think most of the time it's a process. And we see that in like the life of Peter, for example, like most, one of the most wrong disciples (laughs) there were, he was wrong, wrong, (laughs) wrong over and over again. And man, Jesus loved that guy. Mm -hmm. Jesus loved that guy. And he kept, Mm -hmm. he Jesus used, God used that guy to bring the gospel to people like me, the Gentiles. Um, And it's because that Peter realized he was wrong for a moment and he confessed that and he went and yeah, I think he even confessed in front of Cornelius. <laughs> He's like, mm-hmm. you know what? We don't, you know, think that you guys really deserve to know God, but God has shown me <laughs> <laughs> that, that I was wrong, you know, like, yeah. and, uh, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's some of it. I am definitely not totally there, but it definitely, that conversation with them starting to confess it before God has set me on the right path to, I guess, trusting God more. Yeah. Yeah. They talked about the idea of a uh, confession, repentance and a uh, transformation. Yeah. And I love their just dis- dis- description of what we tend to do is a uh, confession and like just saying it or, or saying, I'm sorry, Ap- confession oh, yeah. equal apologizing, repentance equals apologizing. And then we don't even worry about the transformation part. Right. <laughs> and so, and so I, I love how they kind of defined it. If like confessing is just telling the truth and um, I think that could be so hard for us to tell the truth because we're afraid we're going to offend God in some weird way. And God's like, I already know the offense that you made. So how can you offend me if I, if, if I already know it? And then being able to repent and say, I'm, I'm, I'm turning away from that. I'm truth telling. I'm turning away from that. And then I'm going to be transformed to do, to do something different. And the transformation is us living in our true identity. And I think that is a practice that what you're talking about is, hey, I I needed to confess this. I need to tell the truth. God, I do not believe you. I don't believe you. I don't think you can do this. And I Mm. think that is, man, I I don't think we practice that enough because we are human. Like God knows we're, we're frail, we're fragile, and we're all over the place. And he knows that. And I think as people who follow him have to be able to engage with him and and be confident in him that no matter what we say to him, like, like he's, if we're telling the truth and we're coming to him in the confession and repentance, um, a humble place in, or even if we're in place of, of anger or, you know, maybe, you know, you listen to this podcast and you're in a place where you're incredibly hurt by, you feel like God was supposed to do something for you, or you feel like, comp- like really angry at God that something didn't go your way or the tragedy that happened in your life. God is not afraid of any of that stuff. He just wants you to tell the truth because when you come to him with exactly what you're feeling and who you are, even though he already knows it, that's when your healing starts to begin because you're starting to tap into the love that he is. And that's, and that's where you meet him. You meet him in, in, in the truth. And that's when you're able to repent, but you can't start the repentance and transformation until we're able to tell the truth yeah. and be able to practice that, whether that be you read or you journal or however you do it, you pray every morning, just start to, what you're kind of saying to start to do some inventory on, on yourself. Like, God, what are the things that I need to know about myself that is just off? <laughs> like, okay, now then what do you want me to do with that? I think that that all goes, goes right in line in that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We're like sitting here and I'm thinking, just and this just came up kind of in my thoughts uh, as we're talking, but it's kind of like we we put a line for God, right? Yeah. Like this is the Beyond the Lines podcast, and we're saying, God, like I'm only gonna love you or trust you up to this point, yeah. <laughs> and like true. I can't, I can't mm-hmm. trust that you're gonna do something greater without, uh, you know, without my help or a little bit of my input or whatnot. But God's like, dude, I got this under control. Like I can do this. Um, so I don't know. I just that came up, and I'm like, that's a good. I think reminder for us, like we are across this entire table and hopefully you too, even as you're listening, um, 
we're, we're frail, like DJ said. Mm. It's our emotions sometimes control, like, hey, how much can I trust you, God? Or how much can I love you? Um, we sometimes fail at asking that question of, hey, what do you want me to do? Or mm-hmm. um, what was the other one? How, how can I? Uh, what do you want me to do? And uh, what was the other one? <laughs> what do you want me to know? What, what do, do you, you want, want me to, me to know? know? That's yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So w- we are bad at that clearly because we forget one of the questions. <laughs> um, but then too, it's like, or third, I should say, we, we struggle at confessing, like, or just recognizing kind of where, where we're falling short. And as I'm reflecting here, we've almost like, there's certain traditions of Christianity in the U S and I think I've been a part of them where it's almost, it's almost a sin to, admit that you're wrong or like like we're 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 convinced by certain you know speakers certain voices in our lives or even personalities out there who have said like if you doubt god that's a sin or if you doubt god or you fear him or you have a fear or anything that's a sin so therefore you you almost get to this point where you're like i I can't i can't let anybody know i can't let god know i can't let god know that i doubt him i can't let anybody them know that i fear but god already knows (laughs) (laughs) but like we don't think about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't think about that because we're afraid of like, oh no, it's a sin to doubt. Oh, it's a sin to, to fear. It's a sin. And they were like, no, 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 that's not a fear. That's a, that's just a apprehension, you know, like, like trying to put different names on it and, and, and say, no, that's not a fear or that's not a doubt because that's a sin. I can't, you know, God would be so angry at me if I, and then let me just, if you're in that place, that's a belief about God that you have, that he'll be angry at you for confess, confessing to him. And I, I, I recommend confess that to him and be free of that because that's not the God that we follow. The God mm-hmm. we follow is a loving God, and he is so quick to forgive and so slow to anger. Um, he's really cool. <laughs> I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah. DJ, you got any last thoughts as we close out this episode? It, no, I think the, the ch- I think this podcast from Jamie Winship and I think what we talked about today comes with a challenge. Mm. It comes it comes with a challenge. So um it comes with the challenge of doing some inventory of, of ourselves. It comes with the challenge of maybe for the first time some of us are able to tell the truth about what we're feeling mm. and the circumstance that, that we're in, how we're feeling about God, how we're disappointed in God. And in coming to him with that saying God what do you want me to know and what do you want me to do? Mm. And I think that, that, that right there is, is a great challenge and, and, um, asking God, God, who do you call me to be? Who have you created me to be? Mm. I'm angry. I'm, I'm upset. What do you want me to know about myself? What do you want me to know about this situation? How do you want me to respond and continue to prepare me? So I think that, I think this like uh, is a good challenge for us as we, as we're looking forward to break down lines and break down walls. Definitely. And I mean, that's the goal too, right? Is we, we had this episode where we're recapping the, the two great episodes that we had with Jamie and Donna. Mm-hmm. And it's, we're saying, Hey, you know, there's some things that we still got to process. And hopefully uh, you as a, as a viewer, as a listener, a watcher, uh, you're, you're walking through those same steps with us of, you know, Hey, where am I falling short? Maybe I need to start confessing, or maybe I've got to start asking the right questions or trusting God to do stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know those, those two episodes, I'm sure we have listened to them many times. Uh, I'm going to go back and listen to some more. Do it. Um, But I think the questions posed there are are good ones and good challenges as well. So Jamie and Donna Winship, if you're listening or watching this, just want to say thank you so much for jumping on that podcast. It was really good. Um, But yeah, so we're going to close out this episode of the Beyond the Lines podcast. And uh, we are from Central Christian Church, uh, a church out in the Phoenix area of Arizona. And uh, we've got a few different campuses and we would love to connect with you. Uh, You can check us out at centralaz.com. And we've got services that you can stream on the weekends or you can come and join us in person. But we just strive to, to live out the idea of loving beyond. That's the purpose of this podcast is we want to love beyond the lines that we've created. And so we're not perfect. We don't profess that we are in any sense. And so I'm glad that you're here on this journey with us of saying, hey, what can I do to to love beyond better and to learn where God is calling me and how he wants me to live? So thank you so much for watching or listening, and we will catch you guys on the next episode.